So we want to be able to win. Um, there are a bunch of nodes in Godot, and one of the most useful nodes is the Area 2D node. And I'm going to show you why, and we'll use that to help us to uh, detect when the player is at the uh, win location. So I'm just going to add a child node of Area 2D. This Area 2D node um, is awesome. I'm going to call this um, Portal. Uh, this will be the uh, the place that the player will end up when uh, when they're winning or when they win. The uh, portal has uh, to have a collision shape. You can see from the exclamation mark. So we're going to add a child node of um, collision shape 2D. I'm going to make the collision shape uh, just a circle uh, this time around. And uh, if I can zoom in on it, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than than it is. Um, and I'm going to add a, and also just so we can see where it is, I'm going to add a sprite as well. Uh, good old fashioned icon dot SVG <coughs> is going to go on there. And the collision shape is slightly less than the size of the sprite. Um, you can see that the collision shapes behind it, you can actually change the order by dragging them up and down to see uh, which one it gets drawn. Uh, drawn last, the collision shape gets drawn last so it appears on top. Uh, so uh, there we have it, the portal now I'm going to group so that I don't accidentally uh, move it around so we have it. Um, what we could also do uh, at this point before we do anything else is to turn that into a prefab because I'm sure I'm going to use it on another scene as well. Uh, so we're going to right click on portal and we're going to say save branch as scene. And I'll put it in the prefabs folder as portal.tscn. So we've got two prefabs already made to use in our next levels. The um, portal that's on this level, however, I'm going to put it over here, um, not miles away, not at the end, because I want to test the functionality and I don't want to waste time doing the whole level in order to do that. The other option would be to put it where it's supposed to be and move my player. But the important thing is that I can test it quickly and not have to waste time. So I mentioned the Area 2D is totally awesome. Um, if I double click uh, this portal, we can, um, sorry, if I click on the scene view, I can go to the actual portal and we can see all of the functionality that this brings with it. So this Area 2D, this node, um, has uh, the node options up here in the top right next to the inspector. These signals are all emitted by different things or different events happening within your game. The Area 2D one um, is awesome at detecting things. It's literally what the Area 2D is designed for. When another body, like a character body or a physics body, enters this shape, the collision shape defined by the, the, the collision shape of this Area 2D, then this event will be uh, fired and you can hook anything up to um, any piece of code up to this. Uh, it's uh, an amazing system and it does allow for this really cool functionality that each of these nodes um, allow for and, that, and let you do. So this body entered one is the one that I'm actually looking for. If you had just another area, um, you could use area entered. You can also have body exited and various other things like mouse entering and exiting too. So we're going to just show you how to we're all, how to um, hook this up to a piece of script, but obviously Portal needs a script in order to do that. So I'm just going to add one now. We click on the, uh, the plus up here. Um, I'm going to change the location again. I'm going to try and be organized, and it is a good idea. So click on the folder. Um, I can't see it inside of prefabs, but the up arrow here next to the path takes me back out to the top level res. And then I'm going to go into scripts there and then click open. So it's given it a name of portal.gd, which is fine. I don't need anything other than the inherits from area 2D. I don't really even need that too, but let's go with it anyway. So hit create. Now we have our script here. Let's make this a bit bigger. So we're going to do some typing. So um, these these uh, ready function and void function come in by default. Um, obviously, anything that you do inside of ready will get done uh, as the game loads in. You can read the, read the comments here that will 
uh, tell you and obviously the process happens all every frame and because this is an event i'm actually going to get rid of absolutely everything and leave it as just this extends that's all that's here and we're going to quickly show you what happens when you hook up one of those events so back again into portal and up to the node tab and we're going to double click on this body entered now this is where you get to choose which object to connect it to. Now this one is the portal that it's connecting from. I'm going to do this because um, there may be more than one portal on the level, so you want to connect it just back to itself. And uh, if I just do that, it'll give me a suggested name. Most of the time this is going to be fine, this on body entered. Um, Good 4 has the ability to also pick functions that you may have already written, and that's maybe a something a bit more powerful that we could use later. Um, so we click on the connect, it automatically creates a function for us with the name that it suggested and the variable that gets passed to the on body entered function is the name of the body or the actual body that entered into this area 2D. So we can use that to work out what's happening. So um, the little green door here is really important too. That that shows that it's actually connected. You could have a function in here that's called everything. It's called correctly, but it's not actually connected. And so you just need to make sure that the green door is there to know that it's actually connected. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the process process that you should do to build these functions up and just test that they work. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to print something. This is the best way to debug things. So I'm going to print uh, body entered, body entered as a, as a console statement. So this print, all it's going to do is if this fires, it's going to print body entered. So I'm going to run the game. Um, all that I'm looking for is if I'm leaving it as a window, I'm looking for when I walk into this portal, you can see that the message comes up inside of my messages right here. Um, that's a great way to prove that it actually works and before you go any further with the code. Uh, and, and it's a great way to solve uh, any of your coding issues just by doing a print statement and the place in code to see what's happening. There's also a really great way to be able to check what body is. So uh, we get given this when the event fires, we get given this body. So what actually is it? So what I can do is I can just do this so that I can say comma body um, and then run it again and we'll see it'll print both things. So as I go in here, by the way, so you can see that it's actually um, the player, which is a character body and it's got its unique ID here, which is this one here that's actually running. So now that that actually works, we can use that to load up our level. We know that the event does fire, so we want to load the level. So in order for us to be able to load the level, we need another level. So I'm just going to click on scene and say new scene and create a new 2D scene. And um, this is going to be called, uh, I don't know, we'll call this um, level two. Really should have called the first one level one. I could actually rename it, but we'll leave it at that. So level two is just going to be completely blank. There's absolutely nothing on level two. And I'm going to click save and I'm going to save it. Now, I'm going to leave it there, but maybe it'd be a better idea to have a folder for all of our scenes right now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click create folder and I'm going to say scenes. And then I'm going to save level two in that scenes folder. Now here's the next tip I want to give you when you're moving scenes around. So we have a game scene, um, but I need to move it. And rather than drag the scene into the scenes folder, I'm going to use the built-in Godot movements. So this could go wrong because often scenes are linked through their path. So another scene will load a scene based on its path. And if you move it around, then it might lose that link. So I'm going to use this method, which hopefully solves maybe some of the problems, but it's not guaranteed. So we can click move and we can choose which folder we want to move it to. And we will click uh, move. That should hopefully organize things where they should be. So now the game scene and the level two scene are both in the scenes folder. And I've done that the safe way rather than just dragging and dropping and crossing our fingers and hoping. Back to uh, the code. So in the portal, we've got this code. We know when the body enters it, 
we can find out what the name of the body is. We could even say, um, just quickly test that as well. So body.name, if we go in, um, out of the way. So this name here is the same as the actual player in the game. So the player is lowercase p. You can see it's exactly the same. So we can use this as a condition statement to make sure it is the, the player that goes in to the level, uh, sorry, into the portal rather than anything else. So it would just look a little bit like this. We would say if body.name. And then we would use the double equals for the comparison. Um, as you know, a single equals would assign a value to body.name. That's not what we want to do. We want to compare it. So if body.name is equal to quote marks player. Um, we've tested that and we know that that's exactly what comes up. Um, so this should work if it is the player. Um, in order to load the scene, we would just use um, get tree, uh, if I can spell correctly. So we'd use get tree dot, and then you would say change scene. Um, and you would say change scene to file. And if you've done that correctly, you should be able to see all of the scenes that are in your res folder. And they're done as a path, exactly like that, which is what I was talking about earlier. So I want this level two scene. So you can use the up and down arrows and press enter when you um, have the correct one. So this should simply load up the level two scene when the player moves into the body. So let's uh, restart this and let's have a little look to see if it works. So we go to here and the next level is loaded. So we have everything that we kind of need in order to make a very, very simple game. We can, when we play this, we can respawn when we lose. Uh, we can move and jump, and we have a portal that we can get to in order to win. So let's uh, add that button in so that we can restart our game. So currently when we play our game, um, we do go to this next level, but it'd be really nice to have a button so we could start that first level again. And it's just going over and doing exactly what we've did already with the with um, using a signal and a script to uh, change the scene. So the level two scene uh, is currently empty. So I'm going to add in a button to that. So um, we'll do the simplest possible way just by literally just adding in the button. So search for button, um, add button and click create. The button appears up the top because there's no text um, in it. Um, it's trying to auto fit the text. So I'm just going to write in the text and I'll say play again. Um, I am keeping it really, really simple. There's a ton of things that you can do with UI, including changing the fonts and font sizes and things, but let's just keep it super simple. I'm going to drag this into approximately the middle of the page. Um, in order to be able to hook up to the buttons event, so if I look over with the button selected, if I look over at node, I can see that there's a pressed event. Um, a press signal and that's awesome I could just hook something up to that and then launch with one line of code the very first level again so I do need um, some sort of script so I could put the script on the button or I could put it on level two and what I feel like I'm going to do is because I I'll, I'll kind of want it to be reusable so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a script but I'm going to call the uh, script menu.gd um, for the main menu and then just click on create. So the button is going to hook up to this script from the pressed signal. So if I double click pressed and then I click on level two and I'm happy with the on button pressed name for the receiver method and I'm just going to click connect. You'll see that it now opens up that script that I made. I've got the little green door showing me that this has been connected to something. I'm going to delete the other things because I really don't need them. I just need this one thing. And if you remember from the last time, in order to load a scene, we use get tree, which gets the main um, tree hierarchy here. And we say change scene to file. And we choose game.tscn, which is our first level. So that's as simple as it is. I can test this scene, specifically this scene, just by running the run current scene or hitting F6 on your keyboard. You click on that and it runs this specific scene. So in theory, I click that and it loads the first level. When I get to here, 
it loads this game again, or this scene again, and I can click that to play the first level again. So there we have it. It's a fully functional platform game um, with terrible uh, graphics, uh, terrible level design, and absolutely no challenge. But it's fully functional, and it, uh, it's the beginnings for a pretty cool platform game.